Okay, this is the first video in a series about modeling motion. And in this introduction video, we're just looking at some applicable concepts. Okay, applicable concepts and some definitions. Okay, uh, with some vocabulary too. Okay, so concepts definition involving vocabulary. First one, um, you would have heard of the concept of a force. So a force is you know, often described as a push or a pull, and it's measured in newtons is the standard unit of measurement. I wonder why. Okay, so newtons is the unit for force, and it's a vector quantity. Okay, and you might know that already. Vector quantity. And one sort of force is weight. Okay, uh, one commonly referred to type of force is weight. And weight is not mass, although it is related to mass. Mass is a scalar, and it's the amount of substance in a body. Okay, so um, it is not the same as mass. Mass is a force, and it's also... Um, measured in newtons often okay uh, there's another concept called g and it's related to the acceleration due to gravity and g can be considered the number of newtons per kilo um, and the gravitational force per unit so it's the gravitational force per unit of mass okay and on earth it's approximated to usually around 9.8 or sometimes 9.81 but it does vary on the planet earth a little bit so it is not a constant unless you stay in the same place as far as some units go when we're talking about things like weight we could have m kilograms weight now kilograms weight is a unit and that equals mg newtons and newtons has a capital n okay so m times g the mass of a body times g newtons is the same as m by itself kilogram weight now you can see the pool balls there on a snooker table and that may remind us or get us to think about this idea of momentum another concept momentum Momentum, we're going to talk about linear momentum because you can get angular momentum, but that's that's not for now, it's for another video. Um, and I do have another video that talks about that. Um, momentum is mass, mass times velocity. Okay, and momentum often has the symbol P and M is a scalar mass and velocity is a vector. So p momentum is a vector quantity as well. Now, I've heard mass talked about as the fundamental quality of motion. So it's to do with um, something's, somebody's mass and its velocity, strangely enough. And we can use that to uh, analyze motion, especially when we're looking at the interaction of two bodies. Okay, And um, when we're looking at um, models too. We often use the particle model and a particle, the concept of a particle uh, simplifies models a lot and especially at the level we're doing maths. And it's a model used and we're looking at a, it, it considered to be a point mass, mass at a point which ignores its dimensions. Okay, this idea of a point mass um, so we don't have to worry about you know things like rate things that cause rotation we don't have to worry about distribution of mass around a body which might cause um, complexity okay that's that's beyond the scope of what we're doing so we can ignore all that so um, a particle is infinitely small it ignores lengths which cause those other things okay so that's what our models based on now, because we're uh, modern human beings, we're looking at the metric system, haha. Uh -huh. And uh, to some people who don't live 
in the country I live in, um, who are still doing weird stuff of imperial imperial measurement from the old era. Well, mksa are our standard units. Now we're not going to worry about a. That's amperes. That's uh, that's not relevant to what we're doing. But mk and s. All right. So that means that the standard unit of length is the meter. M e t r e. All right. The French came up with it, and we use their spelling. The kilogram, not the gram. The kilogram is the standard of unit of mass. All right. And seconds time. It doesn't mean you can't convert them, but if you want standard, standardized calculations, you need to use the MKS system. Lastly, Newton's laws of motion. There's three that we're considering here, and Newton did lots of laws on a lot of things. Um, incredible human being, um, incredible achievements. We're looking at his three laws of motions in this series, and his first law of motion, a body continues to stay at rest or it stays in a state of uniform motion going in the same direction, in straight line that is, unless it's acted upon some other force that's external to the body. Newton's second law of motion can be looked at in two ways. The resultant force acting on a body is proportional to the rate of change of momentum. Now we're going to look at this rate of change of momentum um, in a moment at, on a surface level, but you, you might find um, Newton's second law described more often in this way. The acceleration of a body is proportional to the resultant force that acts on it. Now resultant force is coming up too. So F is the resultant force. So once you've added all the forces that are being applied to a body, you come up with uh, F, which is a vector quantity. You can see the tilde's there. And that equals mass times acceleration. So in other words, the acceleration of a body is proportional to the resultant force that acts on the body and inversely proportional to the mass. Okay, so if we rearrange that, all right, we have um, F times 1 on A, uh, 1 on M, I should say. Now, don't try and write a division there because you're dividing a vector by a scalar. Use multiply by the reciprocal there, okay? Um, that's what that means. Um, this, remember, momentum was um, capital P equals MV. Well, the rate of change of momentum, it's about the rate of change of velocity. And so rate of change of velocity, as you know, is acceleration. So you'd have m times a, and that's why it's there, okay? Finally, Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction, okay? So push and a push back. More in the next video.